All right, after going through and learning how to add text with multi-leaders, set up a text style, um, and add just basic text, we've gone through and populated the drawing. We have a few different notes on here, one calling out the concrete footing, one calling out the foundation, one calling out the concrete slab, and we basically exploded this and mirrored it to the other side and then mirrored it up to make it show that this entire area is the concrete slab. Called out the man door opening and we called out the overhead door opening with this typical two instead of adding two of those notes. So now we can go through and start adding dimensions to this drawing. Before we start adding dimensions we have to create a dimension style. So if we go back to our annotate tab, we look at the dimension, dimensions area here. I can click on this little arrow that will bring up my d dimension style manager. And again, I'm going to choose annotative, set it current, click the modify tab, and it's going to bring up a lot of different settings here. So I'm just going to start up the left hand side under lines. And for my color, for my dimension lines, I'm going to have those show up as blue, which I believe is 0 .005 inches thick. Our line type is going to be by layer. Our line weight is going to be by layer. Baseline spacing, I'm just going to make all these 330 seconds of an inch and we will have to come back and change this right now with the current settings over here it won't let me change this but we'll have to come back to this the extension line so the extension lines are basically this line right here that extends out from the object the dimension lines are the lines that would be right here these are the dimension lines showing up in blue. The extension lines, we want them to be even thinner than the dimension lines and definitely thinner than the object lines. So we're going to use color number 15. So I just type in 15 down here in my color and I say OK. And then again, I'm going to choose by layer by layer, by layer. Now I have the option to extend beyond dim lines. So that's basically saying I want these extension lines to extend past my dimension lines. And I do want them to extend past there. And I'm going to make that 3 30 seconds of an inch as well. The next one is offset from origin. So we're still talking about extension lines. The origin is the location where they start from, the object. We definitely want them to have a gap in between there, to basically to differentiate between object lines and extension lines. So we're going to go ahead and leave that at a sixteenth of an inch see how it looks. The next tab, symbols and arrows. So for arrowheads, instead of using actual arrowheads like shown on here, for architectural drawings, we're going to choose oblique, which is basically a dash, a backslash right there. Now if you look at architectural tick, it is very similar. The only difference is it has thickness to it. So whenever I get a couple hundred of these on a drawing, they start to really stand out and not look good in the drawing. So oblique is a better option because they don't have a line thickness. They take the, the thickness of the color through the plot style table. For our leaders, so I'm going to make those both oblique. For our leaders, we're going to leave those as closed filled and again, 
for our error head size, we're going to use 3 32nds of an inch, just under a 16th or a 32nd of an inch under an eighth of an inch. Whenever I come over here, arc length symbol, we're going to leave it as it is. We're not going to dimension a whole lot of arcs whenever we're doing architectural drawings. And I'm going to go to my next tab, text. So, text appearance, text style. We want to, again, use our annotative style. And I could click on this and I could go back into my text style and adjust it if need be. But we know that's good. We have it set up in other parts of the drawing. And this is why we've gone through and set up the text style before we set up the dimension style. The text color, we're going to go ahead and choose magenta. So whenever we've been drawing everything else so far, we've been doing by layer for most of the colors. So it's a little bit different whenever we're doing our dimension style because there's a lot of different components and we want them to look different than each other within the drawing. So this is one case where the dimensions will have colors specified as opposed to having everything by layer. So our text height is blanked out because we have specified our text style. Our text placement. So for vertical, this right here, we do not want it to break the line like that. We don't want it centered in the dimension line. The standard for architectural drawings is to have it above. And it didn't change yet because I need to change this down here. So if we look at our text alignment, instead of it being horizontal, we want it aligned with the dimension line. And now you can see where it places it. And we do want to read the text from left to right. And we're going to leave this horizontal as centered. Centered in this line. The next thing, fit. So there's a lot of different things in here. If there isn't enough room to place both in text, arrows inside extension lines, the first thing to move outside the, the extension line is either text or arrows best fit. So we're not going to worry about this so much because this next option, the text placement, when text is not in the default position, place it over dimension line without leader. So what this does is it gives us the option to move the text around as needed. If I didn't have this checked, then I would not be able to move it around. Again, we have the option whether or not to make these dimensions annotative or not. We are going to leave those as annotative. Our primary units are not decimal. Our primary units are going to be architectural, which is going to give us fractional inches. So we're going to go ahead and leave this at a sixteenth of an inch. And basically, if I have anything down lower than that, it's going to do rounding. And the, the basic idea is that contractors aren't going to be measuring any lower than a sixteenth of an inch. Down here under zero suppression, and this is basically saying if I end up with the measurement that is only five inches long or two inches long as this case, do I want to suppress the feet out front of it? Do I want to take that out? If I uncheck that, it's going to leave that zero feet two inches. I don't want to see zero feet in there. I want that suppressed or taken out. The same thing goes for if I had, if this were one foot up here, do I want to suppress the zero inches? I don't want to suppress that. I want to see the zero inches. So if something is one foot zero inches, I want it to say one foot zero inches. So I'm going to uncheck this zero inch suppression box. And down here for angular dimensions, I'm just going to go out one one space for the precision. And again, I'm going to
press the, the leading zero degrees. Now I have to go back to my lines and see if it gives me the option to extend. Now we're talking about dimension lines. Can I extend the dimension lines beyond the ticks? So now that I have ticks in here, these dimension lines want to go out past there and they want to go back or out past 3 30 seconds of an inch. I'm just going to click off, click back on to get that to actually show up in this visual. So at that point my dimension style is ready to go and ready to start using. So even though I set up the colors, I don't want to be drawing my dimensions on my text layer. I want to make a new layer, and I'm just going to call it Dims. And I'll make it color magenta. So now I have a layer called Dims Magenta. So to actually start using the dimensions, I go back to my Annotate tab, and I can choose this dimension here, and it'll do some automated dimensions for me. So I basically only have to choose that line. So whenever I come down here, I don't have the option to dimension these overhead openings. So I could choose this linear dimension instead, and I'm going to toggle my O snaps back on, my F3. And my first dimension is going to go from the outside edge to there. Oh, mess that up. So again, I'm going to choose from there to the front of the opening here. And I'm just going to drag it out here and I'm going to left click and drop it and I'm going to do dimension again this time I'm going to type in DIM enter and I'm going to choose continue and whenever I choose continue it asks me to select which dimension do you want to continue with I'm going to choose this one and now I can go through and pick these lines and I'm going to carry that whole way through to the end. So this is my string of dimensions that represent my openings. If I had any offsets in this floor plan, I would have those next. Since I don't have any offsets, I'm going to click linear and I'm going to do an overall dimension as well. So this is the standard format for architectural drawings. There's an overall dimension on each side, and there's a dimension for any openings. We'd go through and do the same thing on these sides.